sometimes I honestly look at my life it's like two different lives there's so many different things that I chose to try and escape one is I was so depressed at one point I remember I would wake up pretty much every morning I was lucky if there was one morning that I woke up during the week that I wasn't crying I would just wake up crying and I thought that was normal I thought everybody woke up crying. I thought that's just what you did, you know. If I look at my life now, I wake up, you know, with almost like this skip in my step because I'm so excited and enthused to create. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean like creating, like doing a whole bunch of stuff. It's like being in the world and being, you know, being in the world, being with the earth, all of it and more. It might be facilitating a class. It might be going for a walk in nature. But for me, my choice is create. And like I said, for so long I woke up and I was so depressed. And then what I actually chose was to take drugs and drink. And I took, a, I ended up taking a lot of drugs, a lot of sort of, you know, been there, done that. I think I took everything except for heroin because um, the needles I was like, mm, no oh. thanks. Um, but, I, but I did that because it escaped my world. It escaped everything that was going on in my world. And I thought if I take drugs, it'll show me something different. And mm. to be honest, it did show me something different and it was closer to the difference I was looking for. And my first uh, choice for possibilities class that I went to with Gary Douglas, I remember going and I had a bunch of drugs and not going to the class, I had them on me. And he not started- Not in you, they were on me. you. No, they were <laughs> on me. There's a crucial difference there's in a that crucial, preposition. There is, yes. there is. And, and he started talking about drugs and consciousness and I remember sitting there and I was just started crying and he had a break and he came over and he said to me are you okay I went well I said you got me on the drug thing you know because that was my savior I was looking at drugs as my savior that's where I could find something different you know mm. and and he said to me well taking drugs and choosing consciousness is like sitting on the edge of a fence he said you know one day you'll end up impaled and he didn't say don't take it, which I'm so grateful because if he'd said don't take drugs, I would have been like, oh, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets to tell me what to do. And he said, it's a choice. And I remember I went outside and stood there and was like, mm, what am I going to do here? This guy, everything that this guy's talking about is what I've been asking for and is showing me something so different. So I could choose that, you know, or I could just choose to just leave. I didn't even have to walk back in the class. I could just leave and go do what I would usually do, go to a music festival the next weekend and take a bunch of drugs and do all of that. But I also knew that wasn't working for me. Yeah. So there was this moment and I went, I remember saying to myself, I'm gonna go inside and find out what the hell this guy's talking about. And I went back inside and stayed for the rest of the class and the next weekend, because I was working at the music festivals, I had this music festival and and I didn't take any of the drugs. And I remember I rang Gary and I said, hey, I'm not gonna take these drugs. And again, I was so grateful that he didn't go, yay, that is the right choice, that's the best choice, because it would have given me the fuel to leave, yeah, to go against, because again, nobody tells me what to do. And most of you have that point of view that nobody tells you what to do, you know, so you'll go against it. And again, he, and, and he said to me, what are you going to do with them? And I said, well, I'll sell them. And he said, I've got a better idea than that. And I said, what's that? And he said, flush them down the toilet. And I was like, hey, hey, baby steps. And I was like, do you know how much money that is? <laughs> and then, so I actually sold them at cost price because I was like, I won't make a profit off this, you know. And I sold them at cost price. And I never touched drugs again since then. And I'm actually going to thank you too. I don't know if you remember this. Oh, I remember. Three-day festival in Byron Bay in Australia and every day I rang you because I, I was just like, I don't know what to do here. I'm like sober at this festival. Everybody was on drugs. Everyone I knew, you know, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And you rang me and you were just so calming. Again, you didn't tell me what to do, but you were just there for me and I, I knew somebody had my back, but you were showing me that I had my back that by my choices. And I got out of that three-day festival. <laughs> I think I had two beers in three days, and that was it. And the interesting thing was how many people were really freaked out that I was sober. 
Yeah. Because they were on drugs and they would look at me and go, oh, no, I can't handle this. And then they'd have to, like, run away. But that changed my whole entire life as well because I got to see the difference that I was looking for with drugs. Mm. I was finding from the tools of access because I was finding me and my choices that could be different. Wow. Mm. Wow. Thank you. That. <laughs> thank you. Mm. And that, that exploration. Yeah. There's so many people who come to access who know something has to be different who have tried drugs, they've tried, they've tried all kinds of things, mm -hmm. you know? Like my favorite used to be the, the quantum light breath meditation where you'd <gasps> for like an hour. And um, it was awesome. And I liked drugs too, they were awesome. Anything to show me there was something different. Yeah, yeah, here. that. But now the interesting part is all of the awesomeness, mm -hmm exists here yeah. now i'm here with it here being it and i know there's so much more available mm -hmm. still always but with such gratitude for this awareness that a lot of us have that there's something different possible yeah gratitude that hey there's all kinds of venues for exploring that difference and and the realization that that actual living of that and the actualization of that comes from us actually being us. In other words, there's nowhere else to go, but there's everything else and every everything to be and every space you can occupy. And it, it's like, it's your mind won't get it, but your being knows. And it really is about your being. You accessing your being is that difference. That's where the kindness, the miracles, the magic, the gratitude for you, the gratitude for yeah. others. And I just want to add here, though, too, I have absolutely no regrets for anything that I me chose too. at all. For me, I have no place to judge anyone. Like, you know, should have one of those T-shirts, been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, and, and whatever works for you is what works for you. And there is always something else that's possible as well. And when you know it, you know it. Yep. And you'll choose it when you choose it. And you know when to choose it. And I I'm And it's choose you. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, it's not that's choose the it. a thing. It's no. not like, oh, choose access. It's no. No, the it is you. Yep. <laughs> you are the it. Yeah. You have you. the choice to choose. Yeah. Yeah, that. And I'm so glad that you brought all of that up also because people often it, you know, when you're doing something like with the conversation about drugs, you know, mm. when you're doing something like that, you're looking for the person to make you wrong so you can defend and make you right. Yep. So you can prove that you're right. Yep. But you wouldn't do that if you didn't already think you were wrong. Because yep. if you didn't already think you were wrong, you wouldn't need to prove that you were right. You'd just be like, hey, this is a choice I'm making today. Mm. You know, and our point of view is it's a choice you're making. OK, is the choice working for you or not? And it's with you and yeah. you about you. Yeah. Boom. Even recently, so I mentioned drugs and alcohol, okay? I know I used to drink a lot to to run away. Mm. Like that was the thing. And and the only thing I would ask of anyone, if you're choosing anything to run away, do you want to have a look at that and then go, okay, is that actually working for me? Mm. Like working for you, okay? And even recently I noticed that I would have a drink, like I, I would drink alcohol to not run away, but it was using it as a tool to de-stress or something like that. And I even stopped doing that. And now I notice when I have a drink, I'm really enjoying it. Like I'm having a glass of champagne or a cocktail and it tastes so good because it's this choice I'm making not to hide from anything yeah. or not to avoid anything. And it's a really different reality. I love a cocktail. Love a good cocktail, <laughs> love a good glass of wine or champagne. But I'm noticing I'm not drinking as much based on, I don't, I'm not looking to avoid anything. Yeah, mm. and that, that, that's, a, that's a game changer of a yeah. perspective. One of the things that I've been looking at with a lot of people in uh, working with them one-on-one -on -one lately is all the things you're using to avoid. Mm. And one of the things I did recently is I stopped vaping. I used to love vaping. Like it was, it was, I figure my intake was about 
half oxygen, half nicotine in my daily life. You know, and because when I do something, I do it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> hold do back. Do it well. Okay, I do it really well. And uh, and I used to. It used to be such a such a, a something. It like you're talking about the escape mm -hmm. or the something that I felt like I needed that gave me something. But it was like, just so slight. Yeah. Right. That. And then I went. You know, I'm gonna try without this thing to see what this thing actually has available. Yeah. And that's where I did it from. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this up for a month. And I figured I could always start again after mm. a month if I want to. And what I realized was, oh, I actually like this. Mm. I don't need that the way I thought I needed that. And and that, there's a level of of freedom in that, but also space. And also, I want to say again, uh, people out there that are like, well, I still vape. I can't be conscious. It's no. Fine. I was yeah. vaping and choosing consciousness yeah. for many years, loving both. Yeah. Still do, you know? I just don't do the vape anymore. So once again, we don't realize it's time to make the choice when it's time to make the choice. And it's not time to make the choice until it's time to make the choice. And you'll know. Mm. And your body will show you if you ignore it. Your body's like, hey, you need to stop this now. Your body will get your attention if you're willing to allow it. So this is this is about about a journey that's actually honoring of us and our bodies. and But also with that, a journey where we as facilitators of access consciousness are honoring of everyone else also. In other words, a facilitator will not judge you, and if they do, they're not doing access. Yeah. A facilitator should be there for you, be there to contribute to you, be there to empower you, be there to inspire you, and be there to show you you're way cooler than you ever thought you could be. Oh, definitely. Definitely that. And way more aware than you think you are too. Yeah.